Hey, what is up, mortals? It is TC Crew here with a new video for you. Welcome to part 12 of What If Deku Was a Vulture Might. I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying, Sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. So begin. The incident in Hosu City was all over the news, but the media had their focus on a different subject. It was the fact that the hero killer had been captured after a very brutal defeat, and his captors were two teenagers from UA's hero course. Normally, they wouldn't give the credit to them, but the circumstances were different this time. Both Izuku and Todoroki had permission to use their quirks for precisely the situation. Therefore, they had no reason to not give them the credit. Another thing that made the situation particular was Endeavor's death. Normally, they wouldn't give the credit to him in an effort to avoid problems, but that wasn't possible now. They also decided to keep his death a secret so that they could conduct a proper investigation, but right now they had no leads whatsoever. Izuku, Bakugo, and Todoroki were all taken to a hospital after the night's events, in case they had been injured in any way. All three of them were more or less unharmed, with the worst injury being small cuts and bruises, but the same couldn't be said for Todoroki. The bicolored teen had been absent-minded and borderline unresponsive for a long time. Izuku didn't really know how Todoroki would react to seeing his own father dead. On one end, he hated Endeavor, while on the other, he still was his father. The two sat in waiting together, silently contemplating what they had seen, until Izuku looked at Todoroki and asked, Is everything alright, Todoroki? With a calm voice, the bicolor teen were cold and expressionless face, one that he usually wore, so there was no real way to tell how he was feeling. Todoroki didn't respond to his question, he didn't even react. He just continued sitting in silence. Izuku kept looking at the bicolor teen until he was interrupted by Bakugo. That's the dumbest question in the world, you see no more! The blonde growled, showing his annoyance. Izuku was about to retaliate in annoyance for being called an alien again, but he stopped himself. Bakugou had stated the obvious. He had just asked a dumb question, but it was still unclear whether it was because Todoroki felt nothing or because he was sad. I don't know. A faint and cold voice then said, catching both Bakugo and Izuku off guard. They both looked to see that it was Todoroki expressionless still unchanged as he spoke. I don't know how to feel about this. I hated my father, and I have for a long while, but he tried to fix things. He tried to talk to me over and over again, but I just ignored it. I rejected him, because I didn't want to fix things at the time. But now he's gone. He's dead. And now, I'll never get to fix anything. It's just going to remain broken forever. The bicolor teen said, his voice being cold while showing a faint hint of emotion. Izuku and Bakugo couldn't identify what this emotion was, for it was too unclear to them. But they were still given an answer. They both looked shocked once they looked at Todoroki's face, for it was something that they didn't expect. His expression remained the same as before, but he had tears going down his face. Despite wearing his usual expression, the bicolored teen was crying. Izuku and Bakugo didn't know how to react to this or what to do. Todoroki was sad. He just didn't fully understand it himself. Deep down, he wanted to fix things with his father, but now it was too late. Izuku didn't know what he could say to make things better, so all he did was put his hand on Todoroki's shoulder. Am I interrupting something here? 
An old and gruff voice then said out of nowhere, surprising everyone. The teens then turned to see that it was Grant Reno, walking in without knocking. Bakugo and Izuku looked at the retired hero in silence, both preparing to say that he should knock before entering. But the one who broke the silence was none other than Todoroki. No, everything is fine. The bicolored teen said, as he wiped the tears with his sleeve. The other two teens were slightly surprised, but they also felt bad that Todoroki had to push his pain away. Gran Torino could sense that things weren't fine, but he decided not to bring it up as he spoke. All right, then. I came here to talk to two of you about your internships. Since Endeavor has tragically passed, you won't be able to continue your internship. Therefore, you have to choose a new one. Now you have two options. You can either pick an agency from the list of the offers that you received, or you can come and intern with me. Of course, this is if you wish to continue after everything that happened. The retired hero said, aiming his words towards Zuku and Todoroki. The teens went deep into thought after hearing this, for they weren't sure what to do. They both had a long list of options, but they also didn't know what Granterino had to offer. They also knew that the part about cutting the internship short was mostly aimed at Todoroki, for he was by far the most affected by last night's events. The teens were silent for a while, unsure of what to do. Izuku's eyes scanned the room in an attempt to find an answer until his gaze landed on Bakugo. The blonde wore a serious expression as he looked at the green-haired boy without blinking. Izuku wasn't sure what this meant at first, but he eventually got an idea. Bakugo's expression was telling him that Gran Torino was good and that he should take his offer. Not only that, but he could feel something else in his eyes. It was as if he was saying that the retired hero knew about the blonde's secret. Izuku's eyes were locked with Bakugo's until the blonde nodded in affirmation. I think I'll take you up on that offer. I'll enter in with you. The green-haired boy then said, breaking the long silence that had been said in the room. Gran Torino just nodded in response to this before looking at Todoroki. I have a spot open for you as well, but I understand if you wish to cut things short. The retired hero said, his voice showing a hint of sympathy. Todoroki was silent for a while, showing a hint of uncertainty, until he clenched his fist and spoke up. I wish to take you up on that offer as well. The bicolored teen then said, his voice sounding firmer than before. Gran Torino nodded as a response to this before walking towards the door. Izuku and Bakiko did not expect to hear this from Todoroki. He had just lost his father. Therefore, he won't be in the right state of mind during what remains of the internships. The two wanted to say something about it, or let Todoroki know that they were there for him, but they didn't. It wasn't that something was stopping them, they just had a feeling. A weird feeling that the bicolored teen already knew what they wanted to say. The trio looked at each other, their expressions both calm and serious without moving. They didn't say a word to each other, but they still knew what the others were thinking as they nodded towards each other before following Gran Torino. After accepting the offer, the trio went to the retired hero's run-down home. Gran Torino intended to work the teens half to death but it had ended up being more difficult than initially thought. Todoroki and Bakugo were the only ones that could benefit from physical training, the former so that he didn't have to always rely on his quirk, while the latter needed to be able to handle the full extent of his own. The only one of them that had no use of physical training was Izuku, for he was strong enough as it was. Instead, he would have the green-haired boy work on his mobility, by having him try to avoid getting hit by Gran Torino while using his flight. This was something that all three of them had to do to some extent, for it was a good way to increase the control they had over their quirks. The training continued for a few days that remained of the internship, and they passed fairly quickly. Before the teens even knew it, they had to return to UA. The students all gathered in the classroom, all discussing various topics. At first, they all talked about what they did at their respective internships, 
But that all changed when Zuku and Todoroki entered the classroom. Now their conversation was a mixture of praise and sympathy. The praise came from the fact that they had managed to defeat and capture the hero killer on their own, while the sympathy was mostly aimed at Todoroki. The news had been made public just the day before that Endeavor had been brutally murdered and that there was no single lead to tell them who was responsible. Todoroki didn't respond to anything that his classmate said as he silently walked over to his seat. Izuku didn't say much either for he had nothing to say. He accepted the praise that he was given, but he didn't say anything regarding Endeavor. Bakugo was also silent because he had nothing to say and he didn't want to bring up anything painful. The class respected the fact that no one wanted to talk about it. As such, they didn't bring it up. But they also noticed something new. It was faint. For there wasn't a lot that made it evident. But there seemed to be some newly established bond between Bakugo, Izuku, and Todoroki. The air between the trio was different from what it used to be, as it gave off the impression that they were close to one another. Good morning, class. The tired voice of Aizawa then said, snapping everyone's attention as he entered the classroom. The teacher scanned his students with his neutral eyes, making sure that they were all present and aware, before moving on the agenda at hand. The teacher immediately went on to explain that the final exams were just around the corner, and that they all needed to properly prepare for both the written and practical portion of it. After that, the school day went on as it should have, with regular classes. Eventually, all classes ended and the students all sat in their classroom. They quickly returned to the discussions they had earlier, with some of them adding either to worry or confidence about the final exams. Izuku was not really worried about the written portion, but he was skeptical about the practical. He was very strong, even the teachers should know that by now. So he had a feeling that they had something special in store for him. The Vulcan want to train together? The voice of Bakiko then asked out of nowhere, sounding way too calm. Izuku turned to face his blonde friend in confusion as he asked, Pardon? With a voice that showed his confusion, Bakugo just got annoyed upon hearing this as he responded by saying, Listen, you may be annoying, but you're not stupid. We're both much stronger than our classmates, and the teachers know that. So they probably prepare something special for us in particular. With his trademarked aggressive tone, Izuku's expression changed upon hearing this as he said, Oh, so you want to prepare for the worst? With a voice that showed understanding, Bakugo only nodded in response to this, showing that this was exactly what he meant. Izuku smiled upon seeing this response, but he didn't get to say anything until someone else spoke up. Midoriya, Bakugo. A cold voice said, prompting the mentioned teens to look at the speaker. It was Todoroki, wearing his usually cold expression. Izuku was confused by this, as the bicolored teen continued speaking. May I join the two of you? Todoroki then said, his cold voice showing a slight hint of uncertainty. Both Izuku and Bakugo were even more confused now, for this was not something that they had expected. The teens had managed to build more respect for the bicolored teen during the internship, but they still didn't understand what he wanted. They felt that there was something that Todoroki needed from them, but they just didn't know what that was. The bicolor teen felt urged to explain himself as he clenched his fist and broke his gaze with the other teens before saying, I've neglected my flames for too long, and I think it's time for me to finally learn how to use them properly. Bakugo's quirk is the closest thing that I can find to my left side, and Midoriya is both strong and kin take whatever is thrown at him with ease. I'm asking you both to help me use my flames. What a voice that showed uncertainty and conflict. Both Izuku and Bakugo were wide-eyed with shock after hearing this, for they finally understood what Todoroki was trying to do. The bicolor teen had really been impacted by his father's death, and it was in a way that he hadn't expected. He was hurt by it and now he wanted to try and make things right by using the only thing that he had left of his father. 
However, to do that, he needed to swallow his pride and ask his two classmates for help. The teens were silent for a while now, not daring to say anything. Todoroki felt the silence weigh on him, as if it was more unbearable the longer it was maintained. Bakugo looked at Izuku, his expression asking the green-haired boy what to do. Izuku just looked at his friend, his, his face filled with seriousness as he only nodded. The blonde responded with silence as he turned towards Todoroki and said, You may join us in training, but we won't slow down to wait for you. With his usual voice, Todoroki almost looked surprised upon hearing this, but he quickly recovered before responding by saying, Don't worry, I won't slow you down in any capacity. With a much calmer voice, both Izuku and Bakugo smiled and grinned, to which Todoroki responded with a smile of his own. The remainder of the class were a little shocked upon hearing this. They didn't understand everything that was said or what it meant, but one thing was for sure. The three strongest students were banned together and about to get much stronger. The weirdest version of the three musketeers had officially formed. This sponsor is by Skillshare. With the services Skillshare provides, you can get access to many in-depth tutorial videos on basically anything you want to learn. Each class that they have is bound to help you with your creative endeavors. Do you want to learn how to make videos like this one? Do you want to learn how to write scripts or edit audio? Skillshare has you covered. And with our link, you can have a 14-day free trial. So, what are you waiting for? Click the link now and get 14 days worth of classes free. Link in the description below. Time passed and all the students trained and studied like there was no tomorrow. Izuku, Bakiko, and Todoroki all improved in various ways, with the bicolor teen training to use his flames until he got burn marks. Not before long, however, the final exams arrived. The students were told to put the hero costumes and go to the training field, only to be confused when they arrived. Waiting for them were almost all the teachers at UA, which prompted the students to ask what was going on. They got an answer, however, when Nozu appeared to explain the finals. The students would be paired in teams of two, but they wouldn't be fighting any robots. Instead, they would be fighting the teachers, where victory could be attained by either capturing the teacher or escaping through the designated gate. The students started panic, especially after hearing who they were going to face off against. Hisuku and Bakugo were paired together, and they weren't afraid in the slightest. Even after hearing that they would face off against All Might, the two teens weren't scared. So we're facing All Might. Izuku explained, his voice not showing a, a single hint of fear. Too easy. Bakugo then responded, his voice sounding fired up as he did. The class were just wide-eyed after hearing this. The fact that Izuku and Bakugo just weren't afraid of All Might just sounded insane. But at the same time, it made sense, since they were really strong. Well, then it's a good thing that I'm here as well. A proud voice then announced. Everyone froze upon hearing this, for they recognized his voice. Hisuku found it far too familiar, and that scared him. The green-haired boy turned around, his face showing utter fear, as he finally saw who had inexplicably joined. Dad? Izuku uttered with a trembling voice. Nolan didn't budge by this. He just grinned as he said, Hello there, son. You and your friend will be facing both me and All Might. With a voice that reflected his expression, both Bakugo and Izuku trembled upon hearing this, but it was made much worse when All Might spoke up. Not only that, but we won't be wearing any extra weights. The two of you are incredibly strong, so we can't afford to be holding back against you. The blonde hero said, his proud voice only sounding ominous in the ears of the students. Class 1A froze after hearing this. The other matches would be against a teacher that was holding back. It was made so they could win. Hisuku and Bakugo, however, were facing the two strongest heroes that had just announced 
how they wouldn't hold back. That was... Hey, Junior, can I point out the obvious? The trembling voice of Izuka Midoriya. Bakugo would normally get mad about the nickname, but now he was too overrun with fear as he responded by saying, Kryptonian, if it's what I think it is, I'm going to blast you! With anger in his voice, Hisuku just kept trembling as he knew that he was about to say exactly what Bakugo was thinking. They had trained together because they were afraid of what their teachers might try to do, but that was all for naught. Even if they had been given a full year to prepare, even if they had known this in advance, no amount of training would make them capable of winning. Azuku gulped at this realization as he uttered, We're dead! Thank you all for sticking around and I hope that you enjoyed. Before you leave, we would just like to let you know that we the Slytos as many other channels for your entertainment and viewing purposes. All the information you'll need is right below here in the description, so feel free to check out all the other incredible projects our team creates. Secondly, on behalf of We The Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. That's all for today's video, so goodbye and have a divine day.